No, don't go. I, I never met another one before. Another what, precisely? Said Madame Maxime in an icy tone. Harry could have told Hagrid it was not a very good answer. Harry could have told Hagrid it was best not to answer. He stood there in the shadows, gritting his teeth, hoping against hope he wouldn't. But it was no good. Another half-giant, of course, said Hagrid. How dare you! shrieked Madame Maxime. Her voice exploded through the peaceful night air like a foghorn. Harry heard Fleur and Roger fall out of their rosebush. I have never been so insulted in my life. F giant? Moi? I have, I have big bones. She stormed away. Great multicolored swarms of fireflies rose into the air as she passed, angrily pushing aside bushes. She was angrily pushing aside bushes as she walked out. Hagrid was still sitting on the bench, staring after her. It was much too dark to make out his expression. Then, after about a minute, he stood up and strode away, not back to the castle, but off out into the dark grounds in the direction of his cabin. Come on, Harry said. Oh, excuse me. Very quietly to Ron, let's go. But Ron didn't move. What's up? said Harry, looking at him. Ron looked around at Harry, his expression very serious indeed. Did you know, he whispered, about Hagrid being half-giant? No, said, ha said Harry, shrugging. So what? He knew immediately from the look Ron was giving him that he was once again revealing his ignorance of the wizarding world. Brought up by the Dursleys, there were many things that wizards took for granted that were revelations to Harry. But these surprises had become fewer with each successive year. Now, however, he could tell that most wizards would not have said, so what, upon finding out that one of their friends had a giantess for a mother. I'll explain inside, said Ron quietly. Come on. Fleur and Roger Davies had disappeared, probably into a more private clump of bushes. Harry and Ron returned to the Great Hall. Pavardi and Padma were now sitting at a distant table with a whole crowd of Bobotten's boys, and Hermione was once more dancing with Crumb. Harry and Ron sat down at a table far removed from the dance floor. So, Harry prompted Ron, what's the problem with the giants? Well, they're, they're, Ron struggled for words. Not very nice, he finished lamely. Well, who cares, Harry said. There's nothing wrong with Hagrid. I know there isn't, but blimey, no wonder he keeps it quiet. Ron said, shaking his head. I always thought he'd got in the way of a bad engorgement charm when he was a kid or something. Didn't like to mention it. But what's it matter if his mother was a giantess? Said Harry. Well, no one who knows him will care, because they'll know he's not dangerous, said Ron slowly. But, Harry, they're just vicious giants. It's like Hagrid said, it's in their natures. They're like trolls. They just, like, killing. Everyone, everyone knows that. There aren't any left in Britain now, though. What happened to them? Well, they were dying out anyway, and then loads of them got killed by horrors. They're supposed to be giants abroad, though. They hide out in mountains, mostly. 
I don't know who Maxine thinks she's kidding, Harry said, watching Madame Maxine sitting alone at the judge's table looking very somber. If Hagrid's half-giant, she definitely is. Big bones. The only thing that's bigger... The only thing that's got bigger bones than her is a dinosaur. Harry and Ron spent the rest of the ball discussing giants in their corner, neither of them heavy, having any indication, neither of them having any inclination to dance. Harry tried not to watch Cho and Cedric too much. It gave him a strong desire to kick something. When the Weird Sisters finished playing at midnight, everyone gave a last loud round of applause and started to wend their way into the entrance hall. Many people were expressing the wish that the ball could have gone on longer, but Harry was perfectly happy to be going to bed. As far as he was concerned, the evening hadn't been much fun. Out in the entrance hall, Harry and Ron saw Hermione saying goodnight to Crumb before he went back to the Durmstrang ship. She gave Ron a very cold look and swept past him up the marble staircase without speaking. Harry and Ron followed her, but halfway up the staircase, Harry... Uh, Harry heard someone calling him. Hey, Harry! It was Cedric Diggory. Harry could see Cho waiting for him in the entrance hall below. Yeah, said Harry coldly, as Cedric ran up the stairs toward him. Cedric looked as though he didn't want to say whatever it was in front of Ron, who shrugged, looking bad-tempered, and continued to climb the stairs. Listen, Cedric lowered his voice as Ron disappeared. I owe you one for telling me about the dragons. You know that golden egg? Does yours wail when you open it? Yeah, said Harry. Well, take a bath, okay? What? Take a bath and uh, take the egg with you and just roll things over in the hot water. It'll help you think. Trust me. Harry stared at him. Tell you what, Cedric. T Tell you what, Cedric said. Use the prefect's bathroom. Fourth floor to the left of that statue of Boris the Bewildered on the fifth floor. For fourth door. Fourth door to the left of the statue of Boris Bewildered on the fifth floor. Passwords, Pine Fresh. Gotta go. Want to say goodnight. He grinned at Harry again and hurried back down the stairs to Cho. Harry walked back to Gryffindor Tower alone. That had been extremely strange advice. Why would a bath help him to work out what the wailing egg meant? Was Cedric pulling his leg? Was he trying to make Harry look like a fool so Cho would like him even more by the com so Cho would like him even more by comparison? The fat lady and her friend Vi were snoozing in the picture over the portrait hall. Harry had to yell, Fairy lights! before he woke them up, and when he did, they were extremely irritated. He climbed into the common room and found Ron and Hermione having a blazing row. Standing ten feet apart, they were bellowing at each other, each scarlet in the face. Well, if you don't like it, you know what the solution is, don't you? yelled Hermione. Her hair was coming down out of its elegant bun now, and her face was screwed up in anger. Oh, yeah? yelled Ron back. What's that? Next time there's a ball, ask me before someone else does, and not as a last resort. Ron mouthed soundlessly like a goldfish out of water as Hermione turned on her heel and stormed up the girl's staircase to bed. Ron turned to look at Harry. Well, he sputtered, looking thunderstruck. Well, 
that just proves completely missed the point. Harry didn't say anything. He liked being back on speaking terms with Ron too much to speak his mind right now. But he somehow thought that Hermione had gotten the point much better than Ron had. Huh. Crazy stuff happening. They just found out why Hagrid's so big. He's half-giant. Madame Maxime was liking Hagrid, but now she doesn't anymore because she, I guess she's trying to keep it a secret that she's half-giant. And Ron and Hermione are fighting. And Harry has been told to take a bath with the egg. Huh.